The chances of this happening, however, are slim. No matter how hard Epic Games are knocking on the door, with many of their veteran writers no longer with the company and their overall shift towards maintaining a low-risk yet profitable business model, I highly doubt we are ever going to see another substantial release from Valve. What a frickin' dumbass. Yeah, I was wrong. Valve did make a new Half-Life game, and not just some gimmicky artifact-esque bullshit either, a proper full feature game. And I'm also late to the party, thanks to the old Rona making it extra difficult to get a VR headset in Monopoly Moneyland, but I eventually managed to spend far too much money on one and I can now happily review Half-Life Alex. And I'll tell you what, it's a good ass game. Dear lord how I have missed the glory of a new Valve game. What really hurt the most about their absence was just how good these guys are at understanding how to make memorable gaming experiences. And Half-Life Alex is just that. Through the incredible atmosphere and tone that the game sets to the array of enemies to shoot your way through a little less convincingly than Gordon Freeman does, Half-Life Alex is a game that's in some ways rather dissimilar to the Half-Life titles we've come to know, but a highly enjoyable one nonetheless. But is it the VR system seller that it was touted to be? And more importantly, does it mark the return of Valve as a game developer? Before I dig into the bulk of this review, I'd like to mention that I played this game using a HTC Vive Cosmos, not the Valve Index, which really wasn't much of an issue because it mostly just limited the amount of obscene gestures I could make without individual finger tracking. I'd also like to mention that I wasn't hugely experienced in VR before diving into this game. In fact, I'd only played a couple of other titles before I did, so please be slightly nicer to me in the comments about how bad I am. In all honesty, you can have a lot of fun just pissing about in this game, which is what I did for a solid 5-10 to 10 minutes at the very start. The pure fact that this game is in VR is enough to make it a spectacle on its own, but that's not to say that Valve are just riding off the back of virtual reality to make this an enjoyable experience. Much like its predecessors, Half-Life Alex explores a few different styles and genres, most notably through its combat. There's a pretty stark difference between fighting zombies, headcrabs, antlions and the combine, and it helped to keep the gameplay nice and varied. You'll see more zombie action in the first half of the game and more combine firefights in the later half, while still having a bit of everything strewn throughout. The firefights are certainly less run and gun and more hide behind cover than the older titles, which makes sense for a VR game. That's not to say that they're boring, because they get pretty intense. The general gunplay is good, fluid and very satisfying. Ammo is reasonably scarce as well and you'll be doing your best to make sure that no bullets go to waste. You certainly don't have as big of an arsenal as Gordon Freeman does, but the game does well to not overcomplicate itself by throwing too many guns at you or trying to be too meticulous with them. And while manually reloading does pose a bit of an inconvenience to begin with, you pick up on it fairly quickly and it becomes rather satisfying. One mechanic that works brilliantly well for the game are the gravity gloves, rather endearingly nicknamed the Russells by their inventor. Being able to simply flick your wrist back to pick up items rather than having to walk over or bend down to pick them up is not only convenient, but rather fun too. The game also has a pretty big emphasis on exploring its environments and will generally reward you with extra ammo or resin that can be used to upgrade your weapons. For someone as inept as me, being able to put a laser sight on my guns was a huge help. Now, I've said in the past that the original Half-Life games are horror games, which is true to an extent. They do have themes and moments that you could certainly attribute to them being horror titles, particularly Ravenholm in Half-Life 2. But Alex is far more heart pumping. Personally, I didn't love this shift in horror factor because I'm a little bitch. I was shitting myself enough knowing that there'd be headcrabs jumping directly at my face, but I think that one of the driving factors towards this is how much better horror works in VR. 
When you look at the original Half-Life games, what you have is a superhuman freak bee hopping around blasting enemies to bits with pinpoint accuracy. If you tried to do this shit in VR, even astronauts would get severe motion sickness. Half-Life Alex has you moving slower, more methodically, and is more immersive and atmospheric, again largely due to the fact that you're playing in virtual reality. Rather than playing out as a run and gun, it plays out much more like a survival horror in certain parts, and this shift is emphasised the best by the chapter in the game simply titled, Jeff. Now, I'm not going to completely spoil the chapter or anything, but when I saw the title pop up, I thought, ha ha, funny name Jeff, ha ha, XD. It was not ha ha, XD. Fuck this fucking chapter. Valve haven't just thrown the old Half-Life formula into a VR game unchanged. While it still feels like a Half-Life game, you're less of an unstoppable HEV suit clad badass, and it's a much more fitting style for VR. But despite how full on the game gets, it insists on padding itself out with puzzles, seemingly because it's a Half-Life game, which I have to say, are definitely the game's low point. I get that they form a bit of downtime between the more intense parts of the game, but you see what's happening here? This is cool. This... This is not cool. Whoever decided to fill this room with trip mines and make us disarm all of them one after the other is a total scumbag and should be ashamed of themselves. You know what's more fun than disarming these things? Throwing debris through them to set them off. At least sometimes they actually let us do that. Much like the older titles, I'll admit I sometimes got stuck, and sometimes it was kind of bullshit. Like this, why would I know to push that bit up when there is never any other point in the game that you have to do that? I can appreciate that they didn't fill the game with physics puzzles like Half-Life 2 because those certainly aren't as impressive anymore, but it'd be nice if I didn't have to solve some stupid ass puzzle every time I found a supply cup at the weapon upgrade station. The general pacing of Half-Life Alex, however, is great, not only for the narrative, but for the gameplay itself. There was a stark contrast between the first and second half of the game, particularly in the combat. The combined firefights were more fast-paced and intense, and I think it made sense to have them more frequent later on as the game escalated towards its climax. The riding is really good, the sort of thing we've come to expect from Valve over the years. I particularly liked Russell, and I think that Reese Darby gave him an incredible amount of character through his voice acting. The Kiwi accent definitely deserves more representation in video games. The dialogue between Alex and Russell throughout the game adds an extra level of context for all of the horrendous shit that Alex has gotten herself into, while remaining humorous as well. You're gonna need a gun! Don't worry, it's unloaded! It's unloaded now! My only real issue with the dialogue is that Alex speaks for us, which doesn't totally kill your immersion, but can sometimes contradict with what you're doing with your hands. I think that VR titles would work better with a silent protagonist, or whenever we finally get around to inventing AI smart enough to have consistent dialogue with us through a microphone. Valve have once again shown that they are masters of setting a scene and atmosphere. At the very start, you're propped up on this balcony overlooking the bleak cityscape, and there's a lot to take in as you delve further through this horrid shithole that you're stuck in. The game is unsettling, and that's not only down to its creepy environments and copious headcrabs, but even the mere act of healing becomes disturbing. Watching an alien creature get crushed as tiny needles begin to jab away at your hand. Like I said, Valve are good at this kind of shit. And while I don't appreciate the creepiness and intensity of this game as much as others would, I can appreciate that it's not done through cheap tricks and jump scares. It does a few sudden moments, but spends a lot more time slowly building its creepy world around you which scares the shit out of me even more. Between the deserted streets to the contaminated buildings filled with eerie zen wildlife to the horrific hell fuck during that chapter, Half-Life Alex always manages to set the scene perfectly. But what's really funny about Half-Life Alex, despite how long so many of us have been waiting for a new Half-Life game after Valve left us clutching its straws for so long, is how quickly it just kind of faded into the background. It was announced, released, and that was about it. I think that the big reason that this game really didn't dominate the gaming landscape is pretty obvious. It's a VR title, and that leaves only a small portion of people who can actually play it. And with many people around the world stuck at home with little to do, you'd think it'd almost be the perfect time to invest in a VR headset. And look, selling between 500,000 and a million copies is nothing to sneer at, but with only around 2% of Steam users having VR hardware, 
I don't think it's been the VR seller that Valve were hoping it would be. Which is fair enough. That's a pretty tall order and it's a big investment. I wouldn't recommend spending as much as I did on a headset if you're only going to play it because you're a Half-Life fan depraved of any narrative continuation for over a decade, but that's not the take away from just how damn good this game is. But on to the most important question to ask going forward. Does this mean that Valve are back? Are we finally going to get Half-Life 3? Maybe even a new TF2 update? Okay, maybe that one's a bit hopeful. Well, put it this way. After that ending, we'd fucking better be getting Half-Life 3. Alright, big spoilers coming up ahead. If you haven't played Half-Life Alex yet and hope to someday not be too poor to afford a VR headset, then you might want to skip over this, because we're gonna talk about that goddamn ending. What makes Half-Life Alex so genius as far as the Half-Life narrative is concerned is that it's not just a prequel. The game sets you up by saying that it takes place specifically five years before the death of Eli Vance. That is certain. We've seen the ending of episode 2. He's fucking dead, right? Wrong. Eli is alive. Holy shit. This isn't just a prequel. Half-Life Alex isn't just a foray into VR, just some filler that adds nothing of consequence to the series. It's taken them 12 years to move the narrative forward 12 seconds, but god damn if those 12 seconds didn't kick my dick off. I'll admit that it's at least partially due to how long it's been since the ending of episode 2, but this is one of the very few endings to a game that actually made me say holy shit out loud. When Eli handed me that crowbar, I genuinely almost jizzed myself. All this time that the series has stayed in stasis, a la Gordon Freeman between the events of Half-Life 1 and 2, Valve has had a chance to revisit it. They've admitted that nothing has really been set in stone yet, and that the way that they've reinvigorated and overhauled the direction that the series could go is very, very clever. I honestly hope that it isn't a question of whether we will be getting a new installation to the series, but rather when we will be getting it, and whether it will be a VR title or a traditional FPS like its predecessors. Despite Valve's clear intentions to explore the VR marketplace and perhaps bring it to a more competitive level with traditional video game media, I think that unless we see a huge shift in the market, which Valve were kinda hoping for with this game, it'd make the most sense for Half-Life 3 to be a non-VR title. Perhaps there could be a split between games where we play as Alex and games where we play as Gordon. But regardless of what kind of game it is, if we don't get a Half-Life 3 after this, then I'll say it. Gabe Newell would be worse than Hitler. Half-Life Alex was so much more than just a VR experiment or a play on nostalgia to sell the Valve Index. This is a reinvigoration of the Half-Life narrative, a showcase of just how competent at game development Valve are and after everything else, a good ass game. I'm pretty damn convinced that Valve is back, but I need confirmation. Sure, the ending of Half-Life Alex all but certainly suggests that there will be a new entry to the series, but was the ending of Half-Life 2 not enough of a cliffhanger to do the same? I will believe Valve is back when I see it, and despite how great this experience was, I need more than just a one-off. It clearly hasn't been the system seller that it looked like it might have been, but I guess despite how enjoyable the game is, it's still hard to justify paying all that money for a system to play one game. Which I say as someone who spent three grand on a gaming PC and pretty much only uses it to play Dwarf Fortress these days. I know it's hard for me to recommend this game as it's only available to those of us with VR gear, but if you're an upper class gamer such as myself, then Half-Life Alex should be a staple of your VR library.